Hello, everybody, and welcome to the latest edition of the Pulse with BP. I'm your host, Billy Parvatan. Folks, I'm so excited to welcome back to the show none other than Coach Kevin Curtin. Uh, Coach was my uh, high school year freshman teacher. He's still, in fact, a history teacher at George C. Marshall High School, former lacrosse and uh, basketball high school coach, although these days he's still coaching his kids, so that's a lot of fun. And, of course, he is a big Rams fan, the defending champion. As we do our NFL season preview podcast, we're recording the night before the season starts. Coach, so great to have you again. Billy, let's ride. <laughs> Billy, let's ride. I'm ready, man. I'm ready for the, the NFL season. I like all the other sports. Give me some baseball. Give me some hoops. But I am so fired up for football season. Was at the Dome on Saturday night watching Q's get their first win against Louisville. Ready for the Rams to defend their Super Bowl championship this year. So let's chat. Let's talk. Yeah, it seems like just yesterday we were talking about uh, we, we were recapping the Rams Super Bowl victory uh, back in February. And man, after such an exciting offseason, maybe the best offseason ever when you really consider everything that oh, yeah. happened. I mean, just uh, I don't know that I've ever been this is kind of where I want to go. With my first point, coaches, I don't know. And maybe I'm a prisoner of the moment. I don't know that I've ever been more excited for an NFL season to start, given all the big moves that happened on and off the field. How excited are you for this season? For, for so long, uh it felt like general managers were risk averse, right? The the desire to sort of uh, keep your job by just not making any mistakes. And you just love seeing guys taking big swings, right? You love Khalil Mack on the Chargers. You love Russell Wilson on the, on the Broncos. I love seeing new play, players and new faces. Love teams saying, hey, we think we got a shot here, right? We got, you know, I think the quarterback position is so important in this league and – you know, if you think you've even got a little bit of a window, you got to go. You got to you got to give up a draft pick here and there. This just is not this isn't the NBA where you can get a guy and, and hope to hold on to him for 15 years and he'll be your cornerstone. You, when you got a chance, you got to go. And so I'm I love it. You're right. I'm, I, I can't remember a season I've been more excited for. I suppose a little bit of that is because I'm rooting for the defending Super Bowl champion Los Angeles Rams. That's right. And let's talk about some of those big moves you uh, you just mentioned. I mean, I'm, I made a list here. Russell Wilson traded to the Broncos. Devontae Adams traded to the Raiders. Tyree Kill traded to the Dolphins. Khalil Mack traded to the Chargers. Carson Wentz traded uh, to the Commanders. Deshaun Watson, obviously, you know, his issues off the field. <laughs> we'll see what happens. But he was traded sure. to the Browns. Yep. Um, what if, if you had to pick one of those moves, and really, I mean, you look at some of the other moves. Von Miller, unfortunately, for your Rams, goes to the Bills. Um, you know, Tom Brady unretired because remember when we did that oh, podcast, he had I, not yet uh, unretired from that 40 day stint. But if you look at all of those moves, I mean, what do you think was the single biggest move if you had to pick one that made you it, just go, wow, I can't wait to watch him play? Very briefly, it's it's Tom Brady. I mean, he's obviously I, I, I guess I never really considered him gone. So that that is sort of secondary. But uh, Russell Wilson, I think I don't I don't think they're going to be very good, but. There's a chance they are, right? There's a chance that that the system in in Seattle that they didn't let Russ cook, that they never put the the talent around him, that they invested in the defense, that sort of thing. As a guy who rooted against him for a decade, the last couple of years have been nice, right? The team hasn't been as good as they were, but I'd love to see if he's I'd love to see if he's still got it. And my God, that AFC West is just just brutal. All those other guys you mentioned, excited to see him. Khalil Mack is just a monster. I love what the Chargers are doing. and But, yeah, I think it's rusty. Yeah, I got to go with Russell Wilson. I mean, uh, you know, like you mentioned, he had a couple off years in Seattle. Uh, won the Super Bowl early on with the Seahawks, but a lot of people say that was really the Legion of Boom. He was just kind of the game manager uh, as part of that. And really kind of going off my next point to something you just alluded, man, is this AFC West potentially the best division ever? When you talk about four quarterbacks, Russell Wilson, Derek Carr, Justin Herbert, Pat Mahomes. I mean, I don't think we've ever seen – you've been an NFL fan. Yeah, like me. Yeah. I don't think we've ever seen an assortment of quarterbacks. I mean, what do you think about this AFC West? Man, it's going to be so fun to watch. I can't, I, yeah, I, I can't remember a, a collection of quarterbacks like that. And, of course, this is the Rams here to play the AFC West, so we got to see all four of them. So things will shake out, right? Eight weeks from now, we'll say, oh, my goodness, can you believe we thought the Chargers had it or we thought this – but as of right now, I can't think of a division that I'm more excited to watch just as a fan, right? I get fired up for those Rams games, but, you know, we we, we do two or three TVs wide here at our house, watch as many games as we possibly can. And that four o'clock window is going to be great. I'm, I'm going to be so fired up for all those games. 
You know, I'm curious because uh, I think this is an interesting question going into the season. Who's under – if you had to pick a player, if you had to pick a coach, who's under the most pressure to win? I mean, there's so many different options that you can go. People might say Aaron Rodgers. He hasn't been back to a Super Bowl in over 10 years. Uh, you know, you maybe you throw in a guy like a Joe Burrow, maybe some of these young phenoms like Justin Herbert who have been elevated to this position of men. You know, we're really expecting them, Josh Allen, to take big steps this year. Lamar Jackson, obviously, yeah. his contract hold out. I mean, if you had to pick one guy, I know it's a tough question. Who would you say is under the most pressure this season? I think it's Rodgers. I think, I think it feels like it's been, it, it might be 13 or 14 years since he won the Super Bowl, and and playoff success is not followed, and he has deservingly won multiple regular season MVPs, and and the playoff success just hasn't been there. Um, lose a guy like Devonte Adams, that that seems to me that the that the organization is saying we can put some of these young guys in here, and and we trust Aaron. I. I do too. I think he's great. I think he's one of the best I've ever watched. Um, but I think he's under an enormous amount of pressure, and I think he puts some of it on himself too. I, I mean, Aaron Rodgers, obviously, that's a slam dunk answer right there. I'm going to also throw in Josh Allen. I mean, there's been a lot of expectations yeah. around the yeah. Bills. I mean, you know you've got a lot of fans. Uh, you're, you're from upstate New York, a lot of friends yep. that are Bills fans. I mean, you look at how they lost to the, the Chiefs last year. They've lost to the Chiefs last two years, but especially last year, I mean, just brutal 13 seconds left. You couldn't close it out. You know, a lot of people are picking them to uh, to be the representative out of a stacked AFC. I mean, we talked about the AFC West, the AFC as a whole. I mean, it really seems to have been taken uh, in kind of a blink of an eye taken over as the superior conference. I know you can kind of give a lot of perspective on this, but I think Josh Allen's under a lot of pressure yeah. to really take that next step and really show everyone that he can re- be on the same playing field as Pat Mahomes, Aaron Rodgers, and Tom Brady. It feels like for a guy that has, you know, accomplished a fair amount, is getting a lot of a, a lot of attention that maybe Joe Burrow probably, hit, Lamar Jackson, some guys who who've done it, who've seen a little bit more playoff success, who've won MVP awards. Uh, I like Josh Allen. I think he's great. I, I'm terrified for tomorrow night. Um, would love to see him step up and and starting in week two. Starting in week two, I got another name for you. I think Mike McCarthy. If the Cowboys, if the Cowboys are anything outside of you know, NFC championship game or, or semis. I think he's gone and Sean Payton is the new Cowboys coach almost immediately. That's, that's my coach under the most pressure. Yeah. And certainly, I mean, Sean Payton has a house in Dallas. He coached with the Cowboys. So, uh, you know, we know Jerry Jones don't play. He's going to spend the money to, to make it, make oh, yeah. it happen. And, um, you know, I wanted to go obviously to your Rams, of course, they're the defending champions, you know, seems like, like I said, just yesterday, they beat the Bengals in that uh, great game in, in the Super Bowl. Uh, what are your thoughts about the Rams going into this season? I mean, I was kind of looking at, uh, you know, some of the moves they made. Uh, um, obviously, uh, you know, good news for them. Sean McVay and Aaron Donald did not, in fact, retire. They both uh, ended up uh, coming back. I know you were uh, relieved. That's terrifying. That, that's but, uh, terrifying. Yeah, and, you know, but, you know, there there are some question marks. I mean, you know, people have been yeah. talking about Matt Stafford's elbow. You know, that might uh, affect him uh, early on in the season. Jalen Ramsey spent some time. He was hurt uh, before camp started. Uh, the Rams did pick up Allen Robinson, so that's kind of a nice option. I think he's going to definitely step up with a guy like Matt Stafford as his quarterback, but they lost Odell Beckham, uh, who uh, still, is, if I'm not mistaken, has not been signed in free agency. Yeah, they, they, they flirt with each other on social media all the time. I'm <laughs> like, just come on, fellas, let's, let's consummate. Let's, let's get this the squad. And then you I, got, you know, uh, Robert Woods traded to the Titans. Von Miller goes to the Bills. So how are you feeling about the defending champs and your team going into the season? I, uh, similarly to last year, I think that I, I love that top end talent. I think uh, I think Les Snead does a great job uh, drafting late in the rounds, finding guys that can contribute. They don't need to be superstars because they've got superstars, right? They got to go out and do their job. And I think Sean McVay does a great job of putting players in positions to be successful. Uh, the places where they lost people, I think they they found a way to replace them, right? You, like you said, Robert Woods and Odell Beckham. Um, I love Allen Robinson. I'm so excited to get to watch this guy play with the Rams. I think he brings something totally different than those other two guys. Uh, you know, Tutu Atwell and and uh, Van Jefferson. I want to see those guys get a chance where, again, they don't have to be the superstars, right? Get us three, four catches a game. The, the one concern I've got is is depth, right? This is just a team that has is sort of walking on a, on a razor's edge. I love the Bobby Wagner signing. We'll miss Vaughn. I think he was great, but to to get a all like a five six time All Pro linebacker 
to pair with Aaron Donald, to pair with uh, Jalen Ramsey. Uh, again, it just gives guys the opportunity to sort of play a role, not have to go out and do anything exceptional. I, I love the team. I'm, I'm excited to watch them. Uh, again, talk to me at this time tomorrow night. If they've given up a first out, I will be screaming at the television. Uh, so I'm, I can be optimistic now, but, you know, I, I, I'm excited for the team and the, the season ahead of us. Coach, I don't know if you agree with this or not because it does put a lot of pressure on your Rams, but I was thinking about this. They may have the easiest road back to the Super Bowl that, I mean, I can remember. I mean, you think about the NFC. We talked about yeah. it. really all these great quarterbacks for the most part in the AFC. You know, you look up on paper, it's the Rams, it's the Bucks. You know, you got to give the Packers some respect with Aaron Rodgers. But then after that, I mean, it's a lot of unknowns. And even with their issues with depth, like you just mentioned, I just think, man, it seems tailor-made for the Rams, at least on paper, to go uh, back to the Super Bowl. Obviously, you don't play the games on paper, but, you know, considering the fact that there hasn't been a repeat champion in over 20 years for a variety of reasons, I mean, what do you think? Do you think this is as easy as it looks for the Rams? I, I you know, as I, I have looked at the schedule, and division games always make me nervous, right? I, I The Cardinals, Kyler Murray makes me nervous, right? Going and playing in Seattle makes me nervous. I hate to admit this. I think the Niners are maybe the second or third most talented team in the NFL. I think Trey Lance has a lot of questions to answer. I think the quarterback situation is something that is, uh, you know, is is could be up in the air. Um, division games always make me nervous. They got to play the AFC West. We end up going to Green Bay. We end up having to play the Buccaneers, too. It's a tough schedule. If we can find a way to, you know, finish 11 and 6, 12 and 5 again, get into the playoffs, right? Get this team into the playoffs, get everybody in there healthy and and I'll put ours against yours and and we'll see we'll see if you can block Aaron Donald, we'll see if you can slow Cooper Cup down and and we'll go from there. I'm I'm I wouldn't say it's easy, you're right. It, it's it's got to be one out on the field, but our guys have shown they can do it. And so I'm I'm pumped for the season, but uh I mentioned this in the last one. I'm sort of a naturally pessimistic man, so I will, I will wait until uh, I've seen, I've seen it all before I get too excited. And before we kind of go to our, uh, you know, each of the divisions and, and talk about each divisions and, and start making our playoff picks, I have to ask you. I know you're biased, but with how stacked the receiver position has gotten in the NFL, are you willing to say Cooper Cup is the best receiver in the game? No, I'm not. No, I think. I think he's exceptional. I think he's – I love him. I love watching him play. I think he had to shoulder a, a huge burden last year. You lose Robert Woods. I think you uh, – you know, there were three or four games there where they're trying to get OBJ acclimated. I, I think he is exceptional. I think he's right there with Justin Jefferson. I think he's right there with Jamar Chase. But to, to sit here and say, you know, Justin Jefferson can't be the first ever 2,000-yard receiver, I don't, I don't think I can say – clear cut that Cooper cut is the best wide receiver. Uh, he's pretty damn good though. I will give you that. I, I love rooting for that guy. I'd love to see it again. Right. He, last year was his, his year after the year from the ACL surgery. And boy, he looks nothing short of exceptional. He looked like all of famer, all of famers do it over four or five years. He had some pretty good years early in his career. Let's let's see him let's him be an uh, see him be an all pro for the next three or four years and then I'll be ready to to crown him. Yeah, I agree with you. I mean, he's right in the mix. It's so hard to really separate yeah. these guys. I might give a slight edge to Devontae uh, Adams, but um, you know, yep. uh, I mean, just, to, just we'll to see what he looks like, right? We'll see what yeah. he looks like this year, right? When you don't have the most accurate passer in in the history of the NFL throwing it to you, let's let. I mean, Derek Carr's no slouch, but Aaron Rodgers is is I I don't like him as a person. And he is he is sort of like my football Derek Jeter, right? I don't I don't like you, but my God, are you good? You got you you can't maybe it's more of a Alex Rodriguez, right? Derek Jeter isn't so awful. It's more of the Alex He's Rodriguez. A nice guy. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. So all right, well, let's go to this division. So I think what we'll do here is we'll kind of go through each division, maybe talk about some of the big storylines in the division. Then at the end of the discussion, make our uh, division picks. I'm more excited. We'll get to this in a little bit for our wild card picks because that's where I think we really might have some discrepancies, especially in the AFC. But first, yep. we'll start with the uh, NFC and we'll go to the NFC North. I mean, you got the Vikings, Packers, Bears, and Lions. Uh, obviously, we've talked about the Packers. They lost Devontae Adams in that trade. Aaron Rodgers, we we didn't know if he was going to go or stay. He ends up signing a massive contract, but now he's got question marks on offense. Maybe he's going to be 
relying on guys like Alan Lazard, guy like Sammy Watkins. You got the Vikings. I mean, your former uh, offensive coordinator, Kevin O'Connell, is new new head coach. Can he unlock Kirk Cousins in that potent offense? We know all those big names we got for the Vikings on that offense. The Bears, a lot of question marks around Justin Fields. Can he continue to uh, take the next big step? And, of course, the Lions, you know, we love Mrs. Curtin, but uh, I think they're a nice uh, hard knocks team. But Dan Campbell will get those guys to play hard here. But, obviously, Coach, you look at this division, what are your thoughts on the NFC North? I, I can start quick and easy here. The Bears, boy, I like Justin Fields. I, I think he's a good ball player. I feel bad about everything that surrounds him. We can, I think the bears are, are the dregs of the division, uh, excuse me, of the division of the conference. I don't, I don't think they are good at all. I, here we'll, we'll start off out with our sneaky take. I think the lions are a, a, above 500 team this year. I think Jared Goff went from a guy who led the Rams to the super bowl to a guy that became a punchline. And he's, he's somewhere in between. You know, if he's the 17th or 18th best quarterback in the NFL, I don't I don't think that that's, you know, they got they've got a lot of talent around them. They can block. And that's what Jared needs. Right. It's when guys are getting at his legs. It's when guys are. That's when he starts throwing the ball away. That's when he starts fumbling the ball. They got a great offensive line. And if they can keep him safe, he'll get the ball out to, to Swift. He'll get him out, out to St. Uh, St. Brown there. I, I I got this team finishing above 500 again. This is so when Mrs. Curtin watches this, I have said I, I've got it. When we get to the NFC South, I've got another Homer pick here that I will be. I'll make sure to to talk about. But I, I think they're good. I think the Vikings and Packers are our top three or four teams in the NFC. Uh, the offense in in Minnesota is great. I just love their wide receivers. I think Thielen's totally underrated. If if Cook can stay healthy. Again, it's all healthy. I think those three are Jefferson, Thielen, and Cook are the most explosive uh, uh, skill players outside of the Bengals. I, I just think they they every single position is a guy that's a home run hitter. Cousins is another strange gentleman. We'll, we'll leave it at that. But, you know, at the end of the day, you look at his season, and he's got 30-plus touchdowns, less than 15 picks. He, he can get it done. It's just – I kind of, I kind of like the way the Vikings are headed, and then the Packers. Are they going to run the ball more? I mean, they got two of the best running backs in the league, and I, I it's, I don't know that they have to, right? It's, I'm going to say the same thing with the Bills, right? I don't know that they have to run, but it's, might that take a little pressure off this D? Might that take a little bit of a pressure off of Rodgers and these wide receivers if, if the screen game, if the if the running game is something that that helps them. Well, so, yeah, I mean, I think that's a great point. I mean, to me, the biggest question mark, can Kevin O'Connell unlock Kirk Cousins? Because yeah. you know, he's kind of a guy that, you know, uh, you look at his win-loss record, uh, you know, it's pretty solid. But, you know, people always question whether or not he can really take the team over the hump. Yeah. But, you yeah. know, Kevin yeah. O'Connell, he's in the Sean McVay uh, coaching tree. So, and As, is Matt, guy, as is Matt LaFleur. As is Matt LaFleur. <laughs> so, uh, the whole division owes their success to the Rams. Yeah. Let's, let's just say, like, let's call it like we see it, though. Yeah, and also, I mean, like I said, Kirk Cousins had a defensive coach for all these years, and Mike Zimmer, so maybe he needs a offensive coach to kind of untap him. Um, Who's a little so, more offensive than defensive? I <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I'm yeah, sorry. but so, it, but so let, let's go with our division picks. I might surprise you here. I'm going with the Vikings. I think they've got a better yeah. team around Kirk Cousins. You know, like we, we talked about those skill players on offense. I mean, Aaron Rodgers is great, but he's going to really have to work with guys like Lazard, who, well, to be fair, he's had for the last couple of years. Sammy Watkins, he's kind of disappeared. You know, he's with yeah. the Chiefs. He became a non-factor for him. So I'm going with the Vikings. I, I believe in Kevin O'Connell. I, I have a – Rodgers, I've got the same category as 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 uh, Tom Brady. It's you, I got to see it before I can say, like, definitely this guy's done. I, I still have the Packers making their way, winning the division. I got the Vikings in the, the a little little wild card spoiler. I got them. I got them in there as well. I think they're both really good teams. You're right. I think they're surrounded. They're surrounding uh, uh, cousins with talent, and hopefully, um, you know, hopefully O'Connell gets the job uh, done for him. All right. So there you go. I mean, the NFC North. We already are disagreeing to start. I'm going with love the it. Vikings. Love I'm it. Going with the Packers. So I'm, I'm keeping notes, uh, I'm keeping a, a record of this as well. Let's move to the NFC South. You, you alluded to you may have some uh, uh, some takes here that could catch some eyebrows. Obviously, the big question, a big question storylines going in 
Uh, can the Bucks win it all uh, for the second time in three years? We've seen uh, Tom Brady. <laughs> he's been taking vacations uh, during uh, uh, during the, the camp. Obviously, he unretired, so there's you know some people are questioning whether or not he really in, uh, deep down wants to to play again. Uh, they lost Ryan Jensen, their center, um, uh, for a, a significant amount of time, and so that's going to be something that Brady's going to have to deal with that makeshift offensive line. But they got Julio Jones, who, in my opinion, he he may not be as good as Antonio Brown, but he's way better of a teammate they're not going to have to worry about him uh potentially being a distraction and hey he's got Tom Brady instead of Ryan Tannehill I think he can yeah. lock that potential with Chris Godwin Mike Evans uh the Saints you know Jameis is their starting quarterback now but they're transitioning to uh, Dennis Allen their longtime defensive coordinator after Sean Payton decides to step away um they've beaten the Bucks I think seven straight times in the regular season so they're they're a team that matchup wise could create problems for Tampa Panthers we know your son is a uh Panthers fan Baker Mayfield I like it. We're, we'll talk about, it, I guess, a little okay. bit. I like okay. the move, and uh, you know, I think with CMC in his in the backfield, dumping him off to dumping passes off to him, he could have a resurgence. Then, of course, the Falcons. I mean, I know we tried. They tried to make a run of Deshaun Watson. They didn't end up getting him. They got Marcus Mariota, who I thought was a solid backup for the Raiders. So you never know with guys like Kyle Pitts and Cordell Patterson, they could be interesting. So uh, I said a lot there. What do you think about the NFC South? I, I want to pick against Tom Brady just like I do with Aaron Rodgers, but I can't, I can't, I can't do it until I, I see it. And, and they got good enough skill guys, right? If, if you got guys getting open for them, they got Fournette who can run it. They got uh, Mike Evans, Julio Jones. I mean, he's going to make Julio Jones look five years younger. He does Julio Jones doesn't have to be Julio Jones. He has to be a number two wide receiver guy that and, and the guy that's throwing the ball is the the best ever i got him at, at i got the bucks winning i got your panthers making the playoffs i got him i got i gotta do it i i think i i love what they're doing they got defensively they got a guy at each level that is has the potential to be all pro they haven't done it yet jc horn shaq thompson brian burns uh good players at every level. I like that. I like leaders that, that can sort of help everybody around them. Uh, and I, I am not a huge Baker fan. I think he's a, I think he's a bit of a sort of, uh, he can be a bit of a diva at times, but he's an upgrade over what they've got. And I think, uh, I think he plays better when he's angry. I remember in college, I remember him in college gesture into the opposite sidelines and jamming flags into the field and stuff this is a guy that likes a challenge and i don't know if he's the long-term solution but uh, an upgrade at that position makes things different and and they've got they got better at the offensive line they got uh equanu e e out of nc state they stole one of my rams offensive linemen austin corbett um and then cmc if that if that guy can stay healthy is is the exception He's he's he is the prototypical running back, and so uh, I love him. I think Jameis might go thirty five and thirty five. Right, he's the first ever to do thirty and thirty. I love watching Jameis. I think he's a. I think he's he just is very carefree. He just loves to throw the ball up. I think they got some great receivers. I like Thomas. I like Alave. Um, I'm wondering about. I, I've got Camara in in. Uh, a similar group that I do to Derrick Henry, not guys that get ding, you know, they, they've gotten dinged up occasionally, but their workload is just so heavy. I think at some point these running backs, as they get to the back half of their twenties, start to to break down. And, and I'm wondering about Kamara. I'm not, you know, this is not my prediction. I think Derrick Henry's done. That is my, that is my bold prediction. I think he's at a thousand yards or less this year. Um, but I think Kamara might be heading, heading in that direction. And then love Kyle Picks. Hopefully, Mario. I, I loved Mario in college, right? I thought he was a great. He, he always seemed like such a great story. Um, but I think the Falcons kind of stink, and I think they know they stink. I think they know they're a year or two away. I'd love to see Ritter get some snaps, but uh, yeah, I got the Bucks and Panthers coming out of the division. Yeah, and I mean, and, and two receivers I'm interested to watch. Uh, DJ Moore, who I think is pretty underrated. Oh, yeah. Got, oh, yeah. with, him with Baker, I think he's going to have better numbers. And then Michael Thomas, I mean, we know with him and Drew, uh, Drew Brees, uh, that that was such a uh, uh, a great combo. But can he kind of restart his career? I know he's been hurt. Um, yep. So, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens with that. But, you know, we both agree there. The Bucks, uh will win the NFC South. I think this might have been one of the easier picks. I. It's a layup. Yeah, that's a layup there for us. So let's uh let's go to the NFC East. I'm very excited to talk about this. I remember last time I actually watched it back to get your quote. You said 
uh, this is let's not pretend like this is a uh, real football. And I was looking at the standings. It's hard to hard to blame you. I mean, three out of the four teams were, uh, you know, kind of mediocre at best. The Eagles actually made the playoffs of nine and eight last year. The commanders now in their first season, seven and 10 with that name uh, last year uh, as the football team, the New York Giants, of course, four and 13. But obviously you look at the storylines, the commanders traded for Carson Wentz. I'm sure you'll have some things to say on. Or not, you oh, I do. Was, I do. I have some things to say about Carson Wentz. Sorry. Go sure. ahead. And, uh, you know, you got the Cowboys. Obviously, there's questions about Mike McCarthy. I think there's questions about Zeke, whether or not he's kind of on the, the downturn as well. They yep. traded Amari Cooper, lost Cedric Wilson. So, really, they've kind of elevated CD Lamb into uh, that number one guy. We'll see if he can kind of live up to that 88 uh, number and that legend that, obviously, uh, 88 for the Cowboys have worn. Eagles, I, I've seen a lot of people kind of high on the Eagles. I mean, you think about it, Jalen Hurts, can he take another step and yeah. really cement himself into a top, you know, 10 to 12 quarterback? You know, you've got Devontae Smith looking to kind of build on his uh, rookie campaign. And they traded for A.J. Brown, so that's another big receiver to bring into that offense. And, of course, the Giants, I mean, I don't know that there's much to say. Daniel Jones will a lot of question marks around him. Can Saquon Barkley stay healthy? I mean, he's kind of – He's not as old as some of the guys you mentioned, but maybe he's a guy people are questioning whether or not he can stay healthy and really be a consistent quarterback or running back, rather. So, obviously, you look at uh, this division, a lot of people call it the NFC least. Uh, at least, hey, there hasn't been a repeat champion in, like, years. I think since Donovan McNabb was the Eagles starting quarterback, that's he's a lot of been a repeat champion. So, what, what do you think about this division? I got – I got uh, the Eagles is the clear-cut favorite. I, I, I think Hurts is – a game manager. I loved him in college. He seems like a like a stand up guy, an accountable guy that that wants to get better. I don't know how great he is. I don't know how great he has to be. I think is the the team they're putting around him, the the defense that they have, the additions they make made in the draft, the additions they're making in free agency, um, and then the wide receivers. I like I like Devonte Smith. I think he's I think he's underrated. I don't think he had the year he wanted last year. AJ Brown is good when he's healthy. Um, o line is good. This is this is the the team in the 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 East that I think is great. I think CD and Dak get these these cowboy bump this cowboy bump. Everybody talks about them, right? Stephen A. Smith and all these guys. I get it. I get it. They're the Cowboys. They're America's team. All that stuff. But I don't I don't think they're that good. I think I think they're one. I think their blue chipper is is Parsons. I think he is a an absolute beast. And I think Diggs is in for a, a down year. I don't think you there's there's regression after I think eleven picks is that I think is what he had so I think there's regression I think he's more sizzled than steak I don't I I think this team is okay I think they're gonna get get healthy against the Commanders and the Giants I love Barkley might have him in two fantasy leagues Billy okay might have Barkley in two fantasy leagues so we uh, I trust that he's gonna be all right um, but you know they're a terrible team. I think they they are sort of planning for the long term. Let Daniel Jones do Daniel Jones things so that they can have a, another another good draft. And and Billy, I don't think Carson Wentz is the answer. I do not think that this is this is the guy that's going to get it done for your Commanders. I think he is reckless with the ball. Uh, I think he is mistake prone. I don't think his teammates particularly like him very much. Uh, I love McLaurin and Dotson. I think those guys are great. I just don't think Wentz is accurate enough to get him the ball on a consistent basis. And, and, uh, you know, first off, Brian Robinson, I just am feeling awful for this guy. I, the, the, the you know, hope for a quick speedy recovery. It looked like he'd taken the job from uh, uh, Gibson. Gibson's running special teams and now he's back being the starter. That's a tough situation. It's tough for, tough for a guy to sort of bounce back and say, okay, I, I, I'm going to take some of the criticism that I got here and I'm going to be ready to ready to bounce back. I don't, I don't think he's that sort of guy. Um, and so I just am not seeing it for the commanders. And I think the Eagles are going to, you know, it's this, this is a sort of six and oh, five and one sort of regular season against the division for them. So coach is going with the Eagles. You're going to think I'm crazy. I'm going with the Washington Commanders <laughs> to win this division. But let me, let me explain to you. Okay. Uh, maybe, All right. I'm maybe ready. You, may, you may, maybe you, you can see some of my points with Wentz. Look, obviously, you know, he's taken some flack in his career. I think some of that is warranted, obviously, last year, the way they lost to the Jags when they needed to win that game and get to the playoffs. Sure, that's on him. But if you take that out of the equation, which I know is hard to do, if you look at a season, 27 touchdowns, uh, seven interceptions, that's a pretty solid season. The commanders yeah. traded him. I can't remember exactly, but I think it was for like a third-round pick. I think what they traded him for 
you know, it wasn't that Fair enough. much. Yeah. They're paying him like 30 million. So, I mean, look at, I mean, Court, we, we saw how much Lamar Jackson's demanding, how much they guaranteed Deshaun Watson with all the crap that he's got to deal with. I mean, what they're paying him, I think it's a good deal. I think they can uh, release him under the dead cap for not that much to little at all. If So I think it's a good financial commitment. Let me see if I'm getting this straight. You've got this team winning, but you're also talking about how they can cut the quarterback if they have to. <laughs> all right. I, I appreciate the fandom. I I hear you. I hear you. But, but but then also, I mean, I think, I mean, you would probably agree with this too. I mean, no one, obviously, just whatever you think about Carson Wentz, there's no question he was empirically better than Taylor Heineke. I mean, oh, yeah. know, he's an upgrade. Oh, yeah. And I think, like I said, the division is weak. So, you know, I, I mean, I don't think it's as crazy as people may think is what I'm saying. I I just saw a story. Is Chase Young out for a while? I believe so. Yep. Yeah. So, I, that, I mean, say, that is, I want to see this guy. I want to see this guy play. I want to see. I remember him at Ohio State and I thought, this guy is gonna. This guy's gonna take over the NFL. I want him. I want him to to go out and make plays. But hopefully he's back and healthy soon. But good for you, Billy. Good for you. Go with those Commanders, buddy. All right. So uh, obviously we, uh, as you can tell, disagree on the NFC. So that's good. I mean, two out of three divisions. We have uh, different winners here. So coach is going with the Eagles. I am going with the Commanders. And I think we've saved the best for last. Your NFC West. I mean. I don't know if there's a stat there are as stacked as the AFC West, but man, this is a, a quite a division to talk about. Obviously, you know we've talked about the Rams; they're the defending champions. Can they repeat this year? The 49ers decided to go with their young phenom Trey Lance instead of Jimmy G. I have some thoughts about that. I'm curious to see what you think about that as well. The Cardinals; I mean, you talk about all the baggage they've had off the field. D Hop, DeAndre Hopkins, who I think is a top seven, eight receiver when he's healthy. He's been oh, yeah. suspended for six games for uh, PED use. Kyler Murray had the whole contract drama about, oh, you know, he needs to watch, you know, four hours of film, I think, a week. So people are questioning his kind of work ethic. But they traded for Hollywood Brown, who I believe went to a, a college with Kyler Murray. So I think uh, they're uh, reunited. Both Oklahoma fellas. Yep. Yep, that's right. And, uh, and, and, you know, keep in mind, the Super Bowl is in Glendale this year. And you look at the last two champions. Oh, okay. The Super Bowl, yep. uh, in, their, uh, in their home field. And, of course, the Seahawks, I don't think there's much to say. I think Pete Carroll probably should have retired by now in their uh, – rebuilding with drew lock so uh obviously you know this division well what stands out to you about the nfc west seahawks make me nervous always but again they are i think sort of the the clear-cut cellar dwellers the the required homework for kyler murray what a slap in the face from the team how do you let that get out even if you needed to need to do it you can't release that stuff you just signed this guy to 250 million dollars this is this is insulting to a guy who who maybe needs it. Who knows? Maybe he needs it. That that playoff performance against the Rams was was tragic. It was not good. And uh, when he plays, he's electric. When he's healthy, he he's he's explosive. And and you're right. New Hopkins is great when he's out there. Um, I don't think Holly Brown, Hollywood's the answer, but okay. I I, I don't think they start off. What, what were they nine and two or 10 and one last year? I don't think they start off like that, but you know, they've got some talent there. I don't think Cliff Kingsbury is a very good coach. I don't think he sticks around for very long. Um, or I mean, like hopefully he does stick around for a long time because uh, I don't think he's very good at, at his job. So, um, but I think the, um, the player to watch or the team to watch is the, the 49ers. They make me, they're, they, they have me terrified. Although this, the little quarterback nonsense is, is I love it. I love that Jimmy G is undermining things. Uh, Trey Lance seems like a ball player. He, he, I love the highlights from him in high school or in college. He, he seems like he's, he, he can go out and get it done, but for them to, to sort of leave Jimmy around leaves, leave some question in the back of his mind it's got it's just got to be tough it's got to be tough I mean being a quarterback in the NFL has got to be one of the hardest jobs out there and uh to have yourself questioned or or to to sort of say hey there's a there's a chance that we're going to be questioning you is tough I uh you know the quarterback is so important I'm just you know it's the best quarterback play I can remember in my life there's 20 22 guys that I think are above average if if the 49ers get even below average quarterback play, I just think their their schedule is going to be tough. They got to play against a tough division. They got to play against the AFC West. I just it, it depends on what Trey Lance is able to do. If he's out there throwing for 250 yards, running for another 80, 
they're they're a Super Bowl contender. They are. There is no doubt about that. And then we talked about the Rams. I think the one thing that I missed when we talked about is how much are they going to miss Andrew Whitworth? He was he was um, a great offensive lineman, a Hall of Fame offensive lineman, and probably an even more important leader. Right? He is. He was incredible on the field, but you know the way that his teammates talked about him, the way his coaching staff talked about him. You can tell they're going to miss him in the locker room. They got some talent. They got some. They got some veteran leadership in there. Hopefully, they're able to step up. But uh, big wit, big wit's going to be missed. That's for sure. And of course, uh, uh, NFL Man of the Year. I mean, he's really one of the all-time good guys uh, off the yeah, field. Uh, absolutely. And uh, you know, I mean, I, I think and this is my question. I want to ask you with Jimmy G is. I think some of the criticism has been fair. Uh, you know, I, I think even you have said it in the past that the, the 49ers won not because of him, but kind of yeah. in spite of him. But I think, I mean, to some extent, you got to give him credit. He's the guy behind the pocket. He beat Aaron Rodgers twice. He went to a Super Bowl, probably should have won that Super Bowl. And then a couple plays last year from taking them back to the Super Bowl. And, you know, by all reports, you know, he's very liked and he's well liked in the, in the locker room. I mean, guys like Debo Samuel. Uh, and and some of the other guys on that team like him. I mean, so do you think it's a mistake if the locker room likes him to go in a different direction with Trey Lance, who, as you mentioned, has a lot of unknowns? I, I think it's I think it's it's risky. It's nice to have a a good backup. It's good to have that for a guy that runs. I think that's good. I think it's what it sounds like is they've sort of he hasn't been at anything. He hasn't been at practices. He's been off on his own field. He hasn't been in meetings. It seems like they're giving him a chance to. Trey Lance to sort of take the team, but it, you're playing with fire. And I think Kyle Shanahan coaches like a, he, he's a different dude. He really is. I think he 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 thinks he knows what he he's doing at all times, and it's hard to argue with him. I mean, his dad was great, and and he's been he's led a team to a conference championship. He's led a team to a, a Super Bowl. He's an offensive coordinator on a Super Bowl team. He knows what he's doing, but um, you know, you get in his doghouse, or you 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 know if if things aren't going well for you. It seems like he he's the sort of guy that can rub players a little bit. And so if he handles this quarterback situation, well, they're going to be a dangerous team, which drives me crazy because I hate the Niners. Yeah. I mean, obviously you give credit to the Rams. They beat them when they count, when it counted, but I think the Niners had beaten them what six straight times. So, I mean, even with Trey Lance, I think this is going to be a tough matchup, especially with all the skilled players they have. Although I did see today, George Kittle uh, might be banged up a little bit, but you know, we'll see what happens with that. Day, so is it a day that ends in Y? Of course, <laughs> you know, he's backed up. Of course, I mean, he's terrifying. I hate, I hate going against him, but it's George Kittle. He's he's going to be a little hurt. So, do you have the Rams uh, winning the division? Will you go that far? No, no, wow. I don't think so. I think what I think, you know, I I, I think this is a team that is smart enough to say, we got to rest our guys. We gotta, we gotta. Not even rest them, but you know, maybe Aaron Donald's playing eighty percent of the snaps, not ninety-five percent of the snaps, right? Maybe we're running the ball a little bit more. You know, let's say uh, Stafford's elbow flares up a little bit. I, I think they're smart enough to understand the long, the, the long uh, game. And and like we said, the NFC is just not as deep. If they're playing in the AFC, they got to go no breaks the whole time and. That could be tough with a team that is this uh, veteran laden. I think I think they're smart enough. I think they know how to do it, and I think the the Niners are this good. I think that they will go out and win the division. I think the Rams are uh, are you know a three or a four. Uh, I guess I, I'm messing up the kind. I think they're like the third or fourth best team in the in the conference. They end up as a wild card spot, and nobody wants to play it. I don't. I don't think anybody is uh, looking forward to playing against this team. Wow, I'm shocked because. But you did say you are a pessimistic fan, so. Maybe oh yes. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> and I'm, I'm reverse jinxing my team entirely here. I hope they win. I would love for them to be 17 and 0 heading into the playoffs. But I'm. Hey, the 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 Niners winning the playoffs was great. It really was, and it was the first time we've beaten them in three years. And so. I, I would I would love to sit here and say that the Niners can't do it, but I'm sitting here looking at the Golden Gate Bridge in the background. This feels this feels like uh, you're you're going to pick the Niners. Is that is that why you've gone with the San Francisco Bay in the background there? 
Uh, no, I didn't. I, I just like the background. It's, it's better with the face and everything. But uh, I, I, I am surprised by that. But I will go with your Rams to win the division. I just think, you know, Matt Stafford is the is the safest bet in the division. Even That's with a good call. Problems. That's a good call. Um, you know, we talked about it. Uh, the Cardinals have their drama off the field with Kyler Murray. The 49ers, just too many question marks. I think if Jimmy G had been starting, I may have tended to lean towards yeah. the Rams. Yeah. Or the Niners, rather. But I'm going Stafford with the Rams. But I, I think it's it's probably, you know, Five years from now, they may look back and say that was a tough year. Maybe Trey Lance takes some lumps. It's tough to be a starter in the NFL, and this guy hasn't played a full season in what three years, right? This has been it's been a long time since he's played a full season. You know they they may not they they may end up nine and eight. They may end up seven and ten. But I think this is this is the year to give him a shot and get it going. You give up three first round picks for a guy, you got to let him play and. I still think the infrastructure around him is good enough. He he is terrifying with the ball in his hands, and and Kyle Shanahan is the best running coach, the the, the best schemer for run plays in the NFL. I, I feel like every time they turn around and hand the ball off against the Rams, it's going for at least eight, if not if not more. So, and, and can you remind me who your three wild card teams were? Okay, I have for the division. I got Eagles, Vikings, Niners, and Bucks. I'm sorry. Yeah, did I have Niners or Packers? Let me just check. You had the Packers. No, I had Packers. I apologize. So I had Vikings, Rams, and Panthers. Panthers, wow. I got the Panthers, okay? Again, my son, my son is, for his sake, my man is is internalizing his father while I watch the game. I need the Panthers to be good. My guy is just as pessimistic and angry watching the Panthers as I am with the Rams. So I'm, I'm hoping they finish a good 12-5 and five and – and and he's able to build some positive energy towards his fandom. And this is this is how it starts right here with his dad picking him going to the wild card. All right. And my three wild card teams, I'm gonna go with the 49ers. I think Kyle Shanahan's a top five coach of the game. I think even with Trey Lance, he can get him to the playoffs. I'll go with the Packers, Aaron Rodgers, even with all of the question marks surrounding him. I think you get you gotta give him the benefit of the doubt that they'll at least make the playoffs if he's healthy. And I'm going with the Cardinals again. I don't love the pick because uh, you know, again, a lot of the drama surrounding the field, but I think you know, with Rondale Moore, with James Conner, who, I, you know, is a solid running back and yeah. uh, some of the yeah. weapons they have, Hollywood Brown, I think, you know, six games, D-Hop comes back, he'll be D-Hop, and uh, I think they'll do enough to get to the playoffs. Um, you know, in a way, kind of rooting for, again, another host team to maybe potentially host the Super Bowl here. So 49ers, Packers, and uh, Cardinals for me. Coach has Vikings, Rams, and Panthers. And on the division winners, we only agreed on the Bucks winning the NFC South. Hey. So. That means I'm excited for the AFC because the AFC yes. is more stacked. So. Absolutely. I'm I I I I think far too often people want to go and say, oh, what happened last year? And and the NFL, there's just a ton of turnover. There's just a guy a bunch of guys that are, are leaving, going somewhere new, and and it's it's you know, it's only the legends, right? It's the Tom Brady's and the Aaron Rodgers is that we can sort of say, okay, this is this is almost certain that it's gonna happen, but uh, yeah. I'm pumped. I'm pumped. Well, let's go to the AFC. I mean, what a stacked conference. We'll first start with the AFC East. Of course, uh, we talked about it. The Bills, I think, according to most people, are probably the favorites or one of the top two teams to make it out of the AFC with all the weapons that they have. They've added uh, Von Miller to their defense, so that's going to be a big presence um, for that team. You've got the Patriots. Can Mac Jones continue to improve in the second year? But in a lot of controversy surrounding uh, the decision to not name a offensive coordinator, and you've got two guys, I mean, and Matt Patricia and Joe Judge, who weren't don't have offensive backgrounds, special teams, and defense. So that's going to be an interesting case. But you do have Bill Belichick, the greatest coach of, of all time. So you got to at least respect that they may be able to figure it out. Dolphins end up getting uh, Tyree Kill and that uh, monster trade. They've got a lot of good weapons surrounding Tua. But can he take that step? That's another question mark. Obviously, first-year coach Mike McDaniel uh, leading the way for the Dolphins. And then the Jets, uh, I don't think we're going to expect much. But, I mean, from what I've been reading, they drafted well. So – you may not see it uh, with the results, win-loss record this season, but they, they kind of have a good foundation in place. So look at the AFC East. I mean, I think we'd, I'd be shocked if neither of us is picking the Bills to win this. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I got the Bills. And, and again, it's I, I think earlier we were saying there's a lot of pressure on Josh Allen, but it's because he's so good. I mean, this guy is this guy is John Elway 2.0. He's he can throw it 80 yards. And, you know, I love that they save the runs. Right. 
we're going to save the run for a fourth down play once a game. We're going to save it for playoff time. This this guy is – they seem to, to know how to use him well. They seem to know when to, to unleash different parts of his game. They got, they got wide receivers. Again, I would love to see them run the ball a little bit more, but I know that, that maybe that is my my – uh, you know, my my bias from years past, I guess, statistically speaking, throwing the ball is going to get you uh, more points more often, and he doesn't make a ton of mistakes. And so uh, adding Von Miller to the number one defense is scary. I don't think Von, I don't think Von's bringing it like he did five years ago, but I think the thing that really stood out for me watching him with the Rams was his speed. My, I like, I just didn't realize how, you know, you realize how powerful these guys are. You see it in their pass rush. You see the quickness, but the way he was able to chase guys down and the way he's able to get from A to B before a quarterback can move is really special. And, you know, to bring in sort of a mercenary like that and say, we're going to add you to a defense that's not set, but is pretty darn good uh, means a lot for them. They're going to be able to go out and, and, you know, bring him in on third downs and he's going to wreak havoc. That, that's a tough team. Uh, that's a tough place to play. Been to a bunch of Bills games there. I got a bunch of Bills fans that are friends. Uh, was up there this week uh, in Syracuse and and talked as much trash as I could to as many Bills fans as I could. Uh, and now I'm already terrified. I'm, I'm worried I'm going to eat my words. But yeah, this is this is the clear cut team. I love Miami. I think they I love what they're doing. We talked about that at the beginning, right? Give give these players, give these teammates uh, a chance to, to succeed. And, and maybe two is not the guy, right? Maybe he's not the guy, but let's find out. Let's find out by giving him people around him to, to go out and make plays for him. Um, I think they're, I think they're trending upward. I've got them as a wild card team. Uh, I like the jets. I, I agree with you. The draft was strong and I like Sala. He, he always beat up on the Rams. I think he's a good coach, but again, that may be my Ram bias. Uh, my brother and my best friend are uh, Jets fans, and so I, I spend a lot of time walking, uh, watching them. But you know, I, I don't. I, I promise you, Billy. I sat here forever and tried to think of a, a way to mix in uh, sleeping with somebody's mother joke, and I just couldn't do it. I couldn't figure <laughs> out. I couldn't figure out how to do it. Uh, you know, he's. He, he, you know, uh, I think the Jets will be fine. I think they're a year away. And I, I disagree with you. I think it's time to uh, take Bill Belichick to the farm upstate. And I think it's time for him to, to get put out to pasture. You can only have so many sons on your coaching staff. You can only have so many defensive coordinators running your offense before people to start to say, hey, was it, was it Tom Brady the whole time? It wasn't Tom Brady the whole time. I know that because he beat the, my Rams in two Super Bowls where it was the defense, where it wasn't Tom Brady. I know it wasn't. I know it wasn't all Tom Brady, but uh, I'm I'm concerned. I'm I'm wondering what decisions he's making. I like Mac. I think he's I think he's good, but I also think he's like the eighth or ninth best quarterback in the conference. And it's a quarterback driven league. And unless you've got Jalen Waddell and Tyree Kill, unless you've got the number one defense adding Von Miller, I, I think you you better have a, a pretty special quarterback and I'm, I'm not sure that that's what Mac is right now I, I think the Patriots finished last in the division actually I think the Jets I think the Jets go by him and and I think Belichick might be sort of on his way out in the next year or two even with Joe Flacco potentially you know starting a couple weeks here and- right yeah yeah and and you know I mean the Jets ended up actually playing better last year when Wilson wasn't playing and so I think Wilson will get better okay He's home, getting nursed. Eh, that's the, I could do better, Billy. I could do better than that. Uh, but uh, I still think they got better. I think they're a good team. I think they they got better in the draft, and so um, I, I I do. I, I I'm I'm not seeing it for the Patriots this year. All right. Well, we both agree with the Bills here, so I think there's not much else to say there. Let's go no, to the AFC no. South. Uh, and uh, obviously, I think this is going to be another interesting division. Do we have to? <laughs> Do we have to? Talk about it? Can we just devote all this time to the AFC West? Because... I, th- I think I think you know there's more storylines here than than we may think. I mean, obviously, you've got the Titans, the reigning number one seed. Uh, they traded for Robert Woods, uh, who was pretty solid with the Rams. So uh, 
that's a nice addition. But people are questioning whether or not Malik Wills, Willis, the guy that they drafted, is he the guy of the future? You've got the Colts uh, who traded for Matt Ryan. Uh, you can kind of answer this too uh, as you kind of give your insight. I don't know that he's that much better, if, if, if at all, than Carson Wentz. I think it's a lateral move at best. I think he's less mobile than uh, Carson Wentz, but oh, yeah. you can see if he can uh, do uh, what he can do. The Jags, I mean, obviously, Doug Peterson, a Super Bowl uh, champion head coach, he's going to come in bringing respectability that uh, Urban Meyer didn't have. We'll see if Trevor Lawrence can uh, improve. Travis Etienne will finally get to play after missing all of last year, so we'll see how he does and uh, the Texans, I mean. <laughs> Not much else to say. Uh, Davis Mills is a starter just trying to get away officially from Deshaun Watson, make that transition, so – I think they're pretty irrelevant, but uh, what do you think? Lovey Smith, though, good to see him get another chance. Yeah, yeah, Lovey, Lovey looking good, too. That white <laughs> beard, oh, ooh. love it, Lovey, keep it up. I got nothing to say about the Texans. I'm excited for the Jaguars. I want to see Trevor Lawrence. I, I think he's, you know, I think he got forgotten last year. I think uh, I think he's going to be good, uh, and I want to start seeing that growth now, right? He's not, he's not the same – He's not in the same category for me as Hertz and, and Tua where it's a it's a prove it sort of thing. It's a let's see it sort of thing. I'm I'm ready for him to get to the Burrow in the Herbert category quickly. I'm an impatient person. I want to see these guys go out and 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 do it. And so he's who I'm most excited about in division. But when it comes, I I, I don't know. You know, I think the Titans take a step back. I think losing AJ Brown hurts. I think uh uh, Tannehill seeing his replacement drafted hurts. I think these are these are prideful guys, and 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 you know he said it right. I'm not here to mentor him. This is this is not my job. If Malik Willis learns, great. I think Malik Willis is a uh, is somebody that I'll be excited to watch. I want to I want to see him. There was talk in the curtain house again. We'll we'll make this about my son that he might go six to the the Panthers. And the Panthers ended up taking the offensive lineman. I had to, to talk to my son and say, this is good, right? We're building, you're building <laughs> the foundation of your team. And then Willis didn't go, was it until the third? Yeah. Am I, am I totally? Yeah. And so I, I think, I think he is, I'd like to see what he can do. Like I said, I think Derek Henry's on the way out. I, I just, am not seeing it from him anymore. I just, my prediction, I do love Vrabel. I love the way his teams play for him. I think he is uh, – I think he's the sort of guy that has a game plan but also reaches his players. His players know he played, know what he's all about. I'll be interested to see if Dan Campbell's that sort of guy. Um, you see on Hard Knocks, they got all their – all their assistant coaches are former players. And so you know they're reaching them. Are they going to be able to game plan the way these other guys game plan? Uh, and I think Vrabel finds a way to, to balance that. This is the number one seed from last year. I don't know that they totally fall off. I don't think they make the playoffs, but I think I think losing a top end running back, and maybe I'm wrong, but losing a top end running back, losing a top end wide receiver, and having a quarterback who's a little anno annoyed makes for a, a prickly situation. But again, I think that coaching staff can get the job done. Um, and I've got Matt Ryan as, a, as an upgrade over Wentz, I think. Uh, but I think this is a team that sort of won in spite of Wentz last year, that they have one of the best offensive lines in football. Quentin Nelson is terrifying. The stuff I saw him do against Aaron Donald going one-on-one -on -one against him is, you know, you know, a guy's got it when, when the game plan is let our, our guard or our center just try and block Aaron Donald. And that's what they do with Quentin Nelson. Their defense is legit across the board. Um, Jonathan Taylor is, is the guy. He's the guy you want running the ball for you. He's got the breakaway speed. He's just elusive enough. He makes good decisions with the ball. Um, it's, I, I think they've, and, and I think Matt Ryan doesn't need to do everything, right? I think he can do things. I think he can get the ball out to Pittman. I think he can get the ball out to some of their playmakers, but I've got the Colts as the, the division winner here. I agree with you. I'm going with the Colts. Uh, Michael Pittman, remember that name. I think he's going to make a, a big step this year. And I'm, I'm, I'm excited for Matt Ryan too. I mean, give him a chance. The Falcons didn't really put a lot around him after that Super Bowl run. So uh, I'm I'm excited for him. I think you know, like you mentioned, AJ Robert Woods is a good you know he's not trees. A Bobby Trees, how you get, you can't let me forget Bobby Trees, one of my top five, eh, top ten favorite Rams, total total pro, 
Well, I hope he hope he blows up. Hope he has a great season and and hope he does everything he has to with Tannehill. Nobody blocks harder. Nobody runs with the ball harder. Uh, great hands. Great teammate. Bobby Trees. Much love. He's, he's sure. the man. Yeah. yeah, I mean, good receiver. I, I think just the you know the the chemistry that Tannehill might have had with AJ Brown. That's yeah. going to take time to develop. So I, I will go with the Colts who should have made the and, playoffs and last year. Um, Robert Woods but, isn't as as explosive. Yep. A, AJ Smith is the sort of guy that takes a 10 yard slant and goes 70 yards. Robert Woods, the sort of guy that digs out a, a defensive end on a, on a running play and, and gets your, your, you know, you're running back eight to 10 yards. He gets you that first down. He's, he's a total pro, but I think AJ Brown's a little better than him. So we are actually two for two. We both agree the bills and the Colts so far will win their respective divisions. Let's go to the AFC North. I mean, this ain't the AFC West. Although I think, you know, you might consider it if maybe they Agreed, had yeah. multiple players, but a uh, great uh, division. Obviously, you've got the Ravens, you know, Lamar's contract negotiations. That's going to be a question mark if they can get a deal done by Friday. But I think with the type of organization they are, they're going to be able to keep it in-house and really not let that affect their play on the field. Can they stay healthy is the big question because they were the number one seed before really just the injuries caught up to them. So it'll be interesting to see what happens. Lamar Jackson, I've said it before my favorite player to watch in the NFL. Oh, yeah. Steelers, oh, yeah. Big Ben retired, but uh, they brought in Mitch Trubisky, who I think is going to be an upgrade. I mean, he's not a scrub. I mean, I don't know that you can expect much, but I know a lot of people were talking about if uh, Kenny Pickett was uh, going to start, but they decided to go with Trubisky. Uh, got Claypool, Deontay Johnson. I think watch for George Pickens. Uh, I think he's going to be a, a, a maybe a, a, a up-and-coming receiver. The oh, yeah. of course, the defending AFC champs. Uh, they signed Alex Kappa from the Bucks. Uh, to shore up that offensive line. So that's going to really help Joe Burrow. Jamar Chase, we know he's a rising star. You've got other pieces like T. Higgins and uh, um, and Joe Mixon uh, as well in the receiving core. The Browns, uh, I think Jacoby Brissett is, is actually a serviceable backup. I don't think they're going to completely yeah, shell themselves uh, in the, uh, to start the season. But obviously the big news, no Deshaun Watson for 11 games. They gave him a fully guaranteed contract. Obviously we know all of his uh, uh, conduct off the field. <laughs> so – uh, that's going to be interesting to navigate. But this is a pretty solid division, Coach. What do you think with the I, AFC? I, I, I got Pennsylvania teams unite is what I've got down for the Steelers here. Great skill players, shaky QBs, right? I love Najee. I love uh, their wide receivers. I love Claypool, Deontay Johnson. Like you said, Pickens is the sort of guy that seems like he's coming on. Let's see him do it first. Although, if, if you're a Steelers wide receiver, there is a, there is a, a credibility that that team exactly. has that few other teams to do. Uh, their offensive line is not good. Uh, I don't think Mitch Trubisky is good either. I think he's an upgrade over Roethlisberger the last couple of years. I think Roethlisberger was, you know, is going to be at that same farm upstate with Coach Belichick, and and they can spend some time together. Uh, I I, I want to lead with this. I think that the Browns' karma has never been good, has never been something that, you know, this is a team that is is – chronically called the mistake by the lake, right? I mean, this is a team that seems to have been snake bitten my entire childhood, right? Whether it was the drive, whether it was the fumble, all the quarterbacks that they drafted, that sort of thing. I think this decision is, is atrocious. I, and I, you know, I don't, I don't want to get on a high horse here. I, I get, I get how, I get how football is decided. I get that, that quality wins the day, but um, I don't, I don't think that this is the sort of thing that you want to bring into your organization. I, I don't, I, I believe in karma. And I think this is the sort of thing that, that haunts a team. That aside, I agree with you. Brissett's not the sort of guy that's going to let the house burn down around him. I think Miles Garrett might be the best defensive player, not named Aaron Donald. I think TJ Watt likes to think he's that good. He's not that guy. He's not that guy, pal. All right. Um, I think they got great running backs. They're right there with, uh, right there with the Packers in terms of guys that you just, I don't know how you stop them. When Chubb's out there, if if he gets anything less than seven yards, it's a win. And and Kareem Hunt, speaking of questionable character guys, is is a good versatile is a good versatile running back. Um, I still think they finished third in the the division and and maybe. Um, maybe even fourth, depending on, on the quarterback play and how quickly they go to pick it. Um, I've got the Ravens winning the division. I think I, I love, I love uh, their infrastructure. I love Harbaugh. I think I said this 
in in the last one. You asked for a sleeper for next year. I think no team is I can remember has had more injury luck. Um, you know, this is this goes back to that same discussion we were having about uh, Trey Lance. Can can a quarterback situation be a headache? Are you able to get through it? I trust Harbaugh a little bit more than I trust um, uh, Shanahan. I think he he's going to be able to find a way to get through it. And I agree with you. Lamar is just is just special. He is he is the guy that that when he drops back to pass, it doesn't matter if the Rams are on. It doesn't matter what are on the other TVs. It's what's this guy going to do? Is he going to lob it over three linebackers who are all locked on him to a wide open Mark Andrews? Is he going to? Is he going to make six guys miss in the pocket and, and scamper out for 12 yards? Or is he going to throw to, to uh, I want to say Marcus. I'm, I'm forgetting Morgan. there. Mark, who's their, who's the new uh, deep threat they've got? I'm, I'm blanking on him. Are, are, is he going to throw to him for 80 yards? This guy is electric. Um, I, I, I haven't seen much regression from his, his MVP season. If anything, I've seen growth. And so I think they're, I think they're the team and, and that has to do with uh, uh, an organizational structure that I, I have an awful lot of respect for. And I think maybe two of the three, if not two of the top four teams in the, in the conference are in this division. I think the Bengals are great. I think they made some really smart decisions investing in the offensive line. I think their two receivers and, and Mixon are the best skill players in football. I think that, that Joe, Joe Burrow gets the ball out, is quick, is, is smart, is elusive, can pick up a first down when he has to. This guy is just – he's great. I want to make sure he's not the next Dan Marino. Dan Marino got to a Super Bowl in his second year and then never went back. It's not that I don't think Burrow's got the skill to do it. It's just that he's in an, in a conference with Mahomes and Jackson and Herbert and and Allen, right? I mean, the, the quarterbacks that we're putting out there that are in his conference, are. it's hard to wrap your head around the amount of talent that is in this conference. And I love Burrow. I, I think he is – He I think he's a dude. I think he's the sort of guy that people want to be around. I think he's the sort of guy that's not – comfortable until until he's perfected his crafts but that conference is murderers row and so i've got them them and the ravens one two and probably two or three of the time you know i think the afc west is just going to chew itself up i think we're going to come to you know i think we're going to get to november and say boy there are two teams that got bit by a bad injury or or the coaching staff never really, you know, got to the players the way that they they should. And I think the Ravens and the Bengals are going to be at the top of the conference. I agree with you. I'm going with the Baltimore Ravens to win the AFC North. So we are three for three. Three for three. And uh, okay, I'm yeah. interested to see how we do in the, the West here. Yeah. Okay. And uh, I, I do want one, one quick note, though, before we move to the AFC West. I, I do want to say shout out to the Steelers for hiring Brian Flores. I mean, that yes, was a yes. great move. <laughs> And uh, Mike Tomlin guy. has never had a losing season, so I'm not saying the Steelers are making the playoffs by any stretch of the imagination, but I don't think we can count them out definitively either. That is a coaching and and Tomlin and and the the Steelers management is right there with the Ravens, probably a little better than the Ravens. I just think the Ravens have a little bit uh, a, a little better team right now, class organization that trusts its guys to to make the right decision, hire the right coach. Brian Flores is a is an outstanding coach and, and, and the dolphins, the way they handled that is problematic at best. And, and so to see that sort of uh, uh, willingness to, to support other coaches in the, in the league, Mike Tomlin going out and saying, I'm going to get the best guy for this job. I don't care if he's got a lawsuit against the NFL. This is the best guy for it. I'm bringing him in. Great call, Billy. Love it. All right. Well, let's. Uh, we somehow are over an hour into this podcast, and we're finally getting to maybe the greatest division. Oh, yeah, I got, not, I got notes. West. I got notes all, all over the place. We, all I'm, right. So let's go. I mean, let's go right to it. Obviously, you know, we talked about all the big moves this division has made. I mean, you look at the Chiefs. I think the biggest question is, will they still be great without the Cheetah? We've got Patrick yeah. Mahomes still. We've got Andy Reid. But I mean, the Cheetah is no joke. Tyree Kill is a big weapon on offense that they will no longer have. Raiders, they traded for Devontae Adams, obviously BFFs with uh, Derek Carr from back in college. I think there's actually uh, a lot of pressure on Derek Carr as well. I think I'll, I'll get a chance to talk about that after you kind of give your analysis. 
You got the Broncos traded for Russell Wilson. Could this potentially be the third year in a row a Hall of Fame QB goes to a different team and wins the Super Bowl after Brady and Stafford? We'll, we'll see what happens with that. And then I think some people are saying maybe the Chargers can be this year's Bengals, a team that hasn't been uh, to the Super Bowl in a long time and comes not necessarily out of nowhere, but with good expectations, surprises the AFC and makes it to the Super Bowl, maybe being the second L.A. team in a row to win it all. What are your thoughts about this division? Man, I think we're going to have some really interesting conversation here. I love this division right off the bat. I don't think the Broncos have it. I, I, you know, we talked about Russell earlier and I, I don't think he's, I don't think he's the answer. I think he's maybe the third best quarterback in this division. I think he's, a, I put him a little ahead of, of Derek Carr. He's done it. It's been a while since he's done it. And Derek Carr, Derek Carr has the pieces around him and, and, you know, losing Patrick in, in, um, uh, Denver is a bigger loss than than people w- will acknowledge. Um, it's just it's just going to be such a brutal division, you know. I I am I am so intrigued by that. I've got the Broncos way down at the bottom. I don't like Josh McDaniels. I don't like Very him cool. as a coach. I think he is a I think he's a great coordinator. Um, I just don't see him as a leader of men. I I think he is a he's a great uh, you know he's a great uh, coordinator I think you know I see a guy like and and you know I see a guy like Shanahan or in in the same light right Shanahan's winning percentage is still below 500 where this is a guy who knows what he's talking about clearly is a, a smart game planner but doesn't have the connection to the players on a consistent enough basis and he he was not good with Denver the first time he was there doesn't mean the guy can't get better, right? Pete Carroll was terrible with the Patriots before he he went to the Seahawks. Guys can grow, guys can get better. Um, I'll be interested to see what that offense looks like and if he's brought enough people around him to reach the players, right? There are guys like uh, Mike Tomlin, guys like uh, Harbaugh, McVay, who never played at, at the highest level, scheme up as good as anybody and reach players, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I'm seeing that with Shanahan. I'm not sure. I'm seeing that with McDaniel either. And so, I love that offense. I'm pumped. I love Darren Waller. I think he's totally underrated. I love uh, Devonte and uh, the slot wide receiver. I uh, yeah, I think they got a great offense. I'll be excited to watch him. But I don't know if offense is enough. Um, I've got the Chargers winning this division. I do. I think the. I think. I think uh, Mahomes is great. I think he's fantastic. I think Travis Kelsey is one of the, if not the best tight end I've ever watched, but tight ends sort of like running backs. There's a point where getting, getting beat up, going over the middle, dragging three guys down and having three guys drag you down starts to take its toll on you. I think, I think Kelsey is, is more of a new style tight end. You know, you see it with like Kyle Pitts, that sort of thing where, He's almost a wide receiver, right? So he may have a little bit less of that wear and tear, but I also think this Chiefs team is is smart to play the long game as well. They got a good they got a good offensive line. If they lose a few things here and there, I don't think this is going to stress them out. Um, I think I think they'll miss Cheetah, but I, I think Mahomes is Mahomes. I, I I think this is his year to go out and say, you know, I am that guy, and so. Um, you know, I, I just think the Chargers are have it right. We we've talked about this this sort of consistency across the defense, right? And they've got Bosa, adding Khalil Mack, Derwin James. That defense is they've got some blue chippers. They got to put it together. Brandon Staley's a defensive guy. He did great things with the Rams, uh, and so I I've got I've got a lot of confidence in his ability to coach up that defense. And then Justin Herbert is literally have has a bazooka attached to his right shoulder. I can't believe how far this guy can throw the football. I love Austin Eckler. If their wide receivers stay healthy, this is, this is a dangerous team. Uh, Williams and Allen can get nicked up, but boy, when they are healthy, they're big guys that get open that, that make throwing them the ball a whole lot easier. They are, they are guys that, that when they're open, they're easy to throw to. And when they're not open, they're still open. And so I got the Chargers coming out of the gate hot and and being absolutely the second best team in LA. 
<laughs> good, good point to end, uh, end on, bro. But, man, can you believe it? Four for four. Yeah, I knew AFC. we would. I knew we would. Yeah, I'm yeah, going would. with the Chargers. I agree with you. I think they just have the better team overall surrounding Justin Herbert. I mean, Brandon Staley versus Andy Reid, that is kind of a coaching uh, mismatch. But, but, I mean, we'll see what happens. I didn't like some of Staley's decisions last year, especially yeah. you know, some of those yeah. slowed down decisions. Uh, I thought I think it was maybe the biggest crime of the playoffs that we got robbed of Justin Herbert. Uh, in the playoffs, you know, if that yep. game had ended in the tie. But, uh, man, I, I love the Chargers as well. I think uh, they will also win the division. So, hard to believe, four for four, uh, with, the, with the toughest division maybe in football. So uh, Great minds. Yeah. Great minds, Billy. And uh, I guess one, one question I did want to ask you about with the Raiders is, I, I mentioned this earlier, where I, I think in a lot of ways Derek Carr is under a lot of pressure. First of all, they yeah. traded to get your BFF, Devontae Adams, to the team, and you know, I, I'm sure you read the story about how uh, Dana White, the UFC commissioner, was saying that yeah. with Rob Tom Gronk, Brady, yeah. they had the deal in place to bring Gronk and Brady to uh, Las Vegas, and at the last uh, second, John Gruden nicks the deal. I think, look, I'm not look. Derek Carr, obviously, he's a pretty solid quarterback, maybe a fringe top ten guy, so he's no scrub. But I think if he doesn't, you know, make noise this year in the playoffs, I think people are going to be looking at him and saying, "Man, we could have had Tom Brady instead of yeah. you." And obviously. We know Brady won the Super Bowl. So what do you think about that? I think, you know, you talk about guys with pressure. I think Derek Carr's got to be up there. I I agree, right? This is this is like that Tua situation. When a team puts top five tight ends, top five wide, wide receiver, other good complementary wide receivers around you, you got to go out and do it. And, and you know, it's not just it's not just uh, Carr. It's, it's McDaniels as well. I mean, this is – these are two guys who've had some success has, you know, I, I, I would like to see what they they've got to do. I like Carr. I think he's, you know, I think it's gotta be tough to have an older brother be a quarterback and, and struggle and come into the league and, and sort of try and uh, forge a pass path for yourself. And so uh, I hope he, I hope he's successful. You know, I hope he goes out and, um, and and does everything we want him to do. The tough thing is he could have a, a season with 45 touchdowns. He could have a season with 5,000 yards and they could finish eight and nine. You know, this is just that, that division is that good, right? I, I don't think the Broncos are going to be any good. And they still got two great running backs. They got two great wide receivers. They got Russ. You know, this is, this is a brutal division. So r- remind me on your, uh, so who are your three wild card teams? I have got for the AFC. Yep. I've got Bills, Ravens, Colts, Chargers. I've got Chiefs, Bengals, and Dolphins as my three. We got we are almost certainly six or six or six out of seven. My guess is you might not have the Dolphins. I do not have the Dol- I have the Chiefs and the Bengals. I'm going to go with the Raiders. I know it's you know there's a lot of question marks, but uh, I mean I would love to see that team in the playoffs. And uh, you know I believe in Derek Carr. I think he can he can get it done. And, yeah. Uh, no, I I don't think not. he's. Yeah, I don't. I don't think he's. You're basically it's picking between Derek Carr and Tua. Yeah, it's <laughs> tough. It's like Jimmy last year in the NFC West, yeah. right? When you're the third best quarterback in this division. Can the other parts that, that are surrounding you you lift you up? See, I, I thought the crazy thing was because I, I did read it is statistically possible for all four teams to in one division. Yes, to play yeah, also. that's right. I didn't know if we were going to go that route, but I mean, you look at the, at the AFC North. There was going to be two teams, so I think yeah. Uh, um, but we, I think we, uh, man, six for six out of seven, we basically agreed that's uh, great that's minds. Crazy. Great minds think alike, Billy. Great minds think alike. Is- Exactly so let's, let's go to the playoff uh, predictions here and, you know, to kind of skip time here, we will uh, go with the conference champions. So who are you going to, who are going to, who are going to be your two teams standing uh, uh, in each conference? And uh, before we get to that, I went back and looked at our uh, old, uh, our last podcast to see the way too early predictions. You had Rams and Bills making the Super Bowl. Okay. I had okay. uh, Bills and Cardinals. So we'll see if we uh, stick to okay. that uh, prediction. So okay. uh, who do you have in the NFC? Do you have your Rams uh, making it back to the Super Bowl? And who do they play in the NFC Championship game? I do not have my Rams making it back to the wow. Super Bowl. Except in my mind, I have the Rams <laughs> going back to the Super Bowl. I'm putting out into the universe. I got the box. I just, Tom Brady's Tom Brady. I just, they got a good team. It's, it's, if this team gets into the playoffs, you saw what they did to the Rams last year, right? The Rams are up 20 plus points and they tied it with less than a minute to go. I, I just, Tom Brady has to be calling the game 
before I'm going to pick against Tom Brady, uh, except for the fact that the Rams have beaten the Bucks, I think, three out, out of the last three times they've played. So in your face, Tom Brady, I know you're watching. Uh, I got the Bucks versus the uh, Vikings in the NFC. So you don't even have yeah. the Rams making it to the NFC Championship game. Well, I mean, I got the Rams to the NFC Championship game. I'm just not going to say it. Yeah. <laughs> so I got Bucks Vikings. Uh, I think I think the Vikings got a shot. I love their offense. I really do. I can't believe uh, I'm actually going to say this. I agree with you that the Bucks are going to the Super Bowl. Hey. I'm going to go with the 49ers. I think Trey Lance okay. is going to step yeah. up. Okay. Uh, you know, I think Kyle Shanahan's a top five coach in the game, like I talked about. And I think if they can, if he can really uh, harness Trey Lance and you kind of bring it, bring out that potential he's got, I think with their with skilled players, their defense, they're they're a bad matchup for anybody. Yeah. I'm going Bucks and 49ers. Though. I'm going Tom Brady at 45 years old. It's really hard to believe we're even saying that to go back to the yeah. Super Bowl. Yeah, it's just staggering. And he he has more Super Bowl appearances than any team. <laughs> it's it's uh, you know he's I, I don't. I can't consider there's as a as a history teacher, I can't even give you perspective on this. There's no there's no perspective. That's that's what this man is. And then uh I, I mean the AFC championship game, I mean, man, this is I mean, you're talking about two teams from a stack conference. I think we're probably gonna disagree here, but who are your two teams standing, uh left standing in the AFC and who do you I have? I bet you I wouldn't be shocked if we've got I got Bills Chargers. I've got I've got Bills Ravens, but we okay. were close. Okay. So, yeah. All right. Why do you have those two teams standing? Left standing. I got the Bills. I got, I got, they just have a little bit more uh, pop on defense, I think. And so I got the Bills Bucks as my Super Bowl. And I also I can't believe it. We have the same Super Bowl. Yeah. I've got well, the Bills. I mean, Billy, Billy, we don't have the same Super Bowl. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, on paper, we have the same Super Bowl. Yeah. We don't have the same Super Bowl, though. <laughs> but um, and why did you pick the the Chargers uh, to to meet the Bills? Do you just think Justin Herbert's going to take that step? I think he. I think he's that. Yeah, I think you see these guys. You know, whether it's Mahomes, whether it was Burrow, uh, you know, when they when they're young and they figure it out, there's a hunger and, and a drive that you know Aaron Rodgers did it early too. Ben Roethlisberger did it early too, and and. You know, I think there is some complacency outside of Tom Brady as you get older that, you know, you you've done it and and you think you'll get back. He hasn't done it yet. I think he's I think he's going to be driven. I think Allen's in the same boat. It's going to be guys that just are willing their team with, you know, not not some mindset, not some. It, it's incredible talent. It's it's. It's players around him and, and uh, an eye for the game, a knowledge of the game, and and just explosive talent that's going to get him there. Yeah, I'm, I'm going with the Ravens. I, I mean, like I guess I'm biased. Lamar is my favorite player, and I think yeah. the, these contract negotiations, if in fact it does not, he does not sign that full ter- long term extension. I think he's going to be motivated. I do have questions yeah. whether or not his style of play can hold up in the cold weather in January and potentially early February, but. Uh, I'd like to see the Bills and Ravens uh, in the AFC Championship game, but I, I agree with you. I'm going with the Bills. So we have uh, the same Super Bowl, Bills and Bucks. Who do you have winning uh, the Lombardi Trophy? I, I, have the Ra- I, have the Rams, I have the Rams repeating, but uh, <laughs> I got the Bucks. I got Tom Brady winning another Super Bowl. I got another, <laughs> another Super Bowl for Tom Brady is is where I got. I The guy is incredible. It's you know, it's uh, a privilege to to have gotten to watch this guy play. I I remember in my freshman year of college beating the Rams and and hating them. And I still can't watch those highlights. I still can't watch them. And I remember him beating my Rams again when I had two children, when I'd been married for almost a decade. This guy is the athlete of, of our generation. He's, he's Michael Jordan's replacement. He's, he's the guy that, that you can't count out until he's gone. Right. He, I, I, I got him. I got Tom Brady. And, and if I'm wrong, well, at least I picked the guy that, that has done it before. I'm going with you. I'm going with Tampa Bay Bucks. I just think, uh, 
I just think, you know, if he gets to a game in the Super Bowl, uh, although, uh, to be fair, maybe the commanders make it, it can lose to them because he has lost to NFC East teams. I'm just joking. But uh, um, I think, uh, yeah, you can't count out the Bills, but, you know, Tom Brady in the big game, we got to go with the Bucks. So unbelievable. I mean, so much agreement, especially that latter half of that podcast. And then we have the same Super Bowl champion, the Bills and the Bucks uh, in the Super Bowl, and we have uh, the Bucks winning. I have to ask you, MVP, I think this is going to be an interesting question. We may actually disagree here, although I, I'll okay. come to see where you go. You have to pick one guy. Typically, it's been a quarterback, but uh, who knows? Maybe a running back steps up and really has a great year for a great team. Who's your MVP for this year? First off, what a travesty. Cooper Cup, Aaron Donald last year. No, you know, these are your these are your league MVPs. It's a quarterback. It's, it, it should just be renamed best quarterback. I get it. It's a quarterback league. 80% of our conversation tonight has been about quarterbacks. I got it. Uh, these guys are, it, they're playing in a different, they're playing a different sport. They're that important. They're treated that specially because people turn on their TV every, every weekend because they want to see the, what these guys do, how they get their ball out, the ball out to the playmakers. I got a couple sleepers first. Okay. Mm. I got a couple sleepers. I got your guy, Derek Carr. Okay. Derek Carr. And I got Kirk Cousins as, as as deep sleepers, right? As guys who things go right, the injury bug happens to other teams in their division. You know, I could see I could see the Vikings being 13 and four, 14 and three, that sort of thing. I could see Kirk Cousins with a 40 plus touchdown season. I could see Jefferson with the first ever 2,000 yard season. Uh, and Derek Carr has just got all the tools and and all the all the the smirching of McDaniels that I did there earlier, he's a hell of an offensive mind. Maybe they, maybe they go 12 and five and, and cars. The reason why I've got him as those two as my sleepers. I've got uh, Mahomes. I think he, he's going to, he's going to show up this year and, and say, you know, I appreciate that that Tyreek was an important part of what I did, but, I was a little bit more important into in to, to to what he did. So I had Burrow, Mahomes. Those are the two guys that I sort of was waffling between because I think Burrow is just – I think he's that guy. But I think this is Mahomes' year to to go out and, and reclaim his spot as, as the preeminent quarterback in the NFL. I was going to go with Justin Herbert because I think if you're able to win that AFC West, I think you, you made a pretty strong yeah. case. Yep. But uh, I, I, my prediction is it's definitely going to be an AFC quarterback. I mean, just yeah. with what yeah. you have to go through, if you can put up an ex uh, ex ex excellent season and your team is great, I think, you know, whether it's Herbert, whether it's Pat Mahomes, Lamar Jackson, Josh Allen, uh, one of those guys is going to end up with Joe Burrow. One of these guys is going to end up winning uh, the the MVP. So, uh, you know, thank God, really the, thank God the Rams play in the guys, NFC. But. This that, that conference is just brutal. I can't. I can't believe it. I can't and believe. Do you it. have a sleeper team? I know we had the same Super Bowl, but maybe, yeah. maybe and maybe not yeah. even make the Super Bowl, but just like you can make if they get in a one and done playoff format, they can make some noise potentially. Win a couple games. The Lions. I don't have. I don't even have them making the playoffs. Okay, I don't even have them making the playoffs. But I, I have. I also fall in love with teams on on uh, what's it called the uh, hard knocks. I think they're building their team the right way. I think you go out and get playmakers on defense. I think you build your offensive line. You build your defensive line. The the Rams, they, they got a former Rams GM or a, a scouting director running their, their, their team now. And, and the last five or six years, the Rams had a lot of moving parts, right? It was Todd Gurley. It was Brandon Cooks. It was Robert Woods, then it was Malcolm Brown, it was Jared Goff, it was Cooper. I mean, the the skills changed. McVay changed with it, but it was always wit on that line. The defense changed, right? It was Talib. Uh, it was uh, Marcus Peters. Is J it's it's Ramsey. It's John. It was it's all the other guys, and it was Aaron Donald on the line. You take care of business on the line. Lions got Aiden Hutchinson. They got the kid from uh, uh, Oregon last year, their, their tackle. And when the line takes care of itself, all of a sudden B minus skill players become a minus skill players. Um, so they're, they're a team I'm, I'm keeping an eye on. I, I mentioned them earlier. I'm going to go with the Steelers. Like you said, with the Lions. I don't think they're going to make the playoffs, but I mean, one of the best organizations in football, Mike Tomlin has never had a losing season. 
You got Brian Flores, a senior defensive assistant. He's going to shore up that defense. Uh, you know, you've got the receivers and Najee Harris with Mitch Trubisky, who can be, I think, a, a solid game manager. So I don't, I don't yeah. think they're going to make the playoffs, but could they have another winning season? I wouldn't put it uh, beyond the pale for Mike Tomlin to do another great coaching job here. But, uh, um, but really quick, uh, Rams Bills. Do you think? Uh, I saw the line. It's Rams minus two and a half. If you had to pick tomorrow it's night, Bills minus two and a half. All oh, those change. <laughs> Disrespect, uh, Billy. How about this? How about this? It's uh, my best friend's wife. Three or four months ago, reached out and was like, "The Red Hot Chili Peppers are in town." John loves the Red Hot Chili Peppers. Should we go? And I was like, hey, "Yeah, absolutely." Julie, Mrs. Curtin loves the loves the the peppers and so i'm like yeah yeah let's do it tomorrow night wow i'm gonna be be at nationals park watching the red hot chili peppers in a in a aaron donald jersey with a fully charged phone with (laughs) with my phone out in front of me because i uh i bought these i'm pumped for the show i love you know i love getting to spend time with my buddy and his wife uh but um i'm 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 so fired up. I'm I'm anxious already. I'm pessimistic. I'm offended that the Bills are a two and a half point favorite on the road. Uh, and I'm ready. I am ready for some football. A Thursday night party. Do they win the game though? Who do you, who do you got winning the game if you have no, to pick? No, no. <laughs> they're going 0 17. Every week I do pick and pools. I pick against the Rams. I, I'm pessimistic. I no, they don't win. Bills got it. There, Josh Allen comes out, throws for 450. Uh, you know, Rams defense makes a couple stops, but Bills pull away in the second half. Rams players don't play in the preseason. Uh, McVay's 0 and 5, or excuse me, 5 and 0 in his uh, season openers. They've never had a team of this quality. They played like the Bears last year and, and just blew the doors off of them. So, uh, haven't played a team of this caliber before. And I think I, I like the, the guys don't play in preseason. I think it's silly. I love that they get their work in at practice, come out a little bit fresher. But I think this is the year where, um, you know, just being a step behind might catch up with them early. They'll get it going soon enough. I got the Bills, yeah. I, I, I got, I'm got i going with the Bills as well. So we both agree. They're a great discussion on the NFL, we, Coach. We, I mean, we agree, Billy, but we, yeah. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but, uh, great discussion on the NFL. Before I let you go, I've always wanted to ask you this because I like to kind of ask an off-the-field uh, question here because we've been talking about the NFL uh, as I mentioned, you are a history teacher. So I was curious, do you have a favorite uh, time in history that you like to teach? Oh, yeah, absolutely. I've, I, we've got um, – I teach a, a world history class. Uh, it's a survey course, right, 500 years of history. Uh, we've just – in our my junior level class, we have uh, moved away from World War II. We cover it freshman year. We cover it senior year. We figured – maybe this is the time that we can, we can find someplace else. And this is our first year teaching the civil war. And so I'm excited to teach the civil war. I've never done it before uh, as an IB teacher. Um, But I think, I think the thing that I was most passionate about and I, and it is a total testament to my college professors, right? In college, you just taken these like minuscule areas of history, right? My 500 year survey course, Every day is a is a college class, right? It's it's the Haitian Revolution or it's it's the Enlightenment. When you go off to college, you're doing this for six months. Uh, for me, it's the Russian Revolution. I had great professors at, at college, and um, uh, the idea that a, a, at the very least a socialist revolution could work was something that uh, seems so foreign, right? Uh, the American Revolution is great, but it's easy to teach that, right? Kids get excited about learning about American history, but this idea of a true revolution, right? Some some change, although, you know, by the time Joseph Stalin comes around, it's not all that revolutionary. It's more a totalitarian dictatorship like we've seen before, but the ideology of that, of that movement is something that uh, uh, always, always I can get excited about in, in the characters, right? You've got Rasputin, you've got Lenin, you've got Stalin, you've got these people that are our characters and and are interesting and are some of also the worst people in history and and it's it's easy for the kids to latch on to that and they, they enjoy it i think for me I, I i was a big world war ii guy for a while but recently i've become really fascinated with the civil rights movement 
And, uh-huh. uh, you know, just, again, all the characters. I mean, MLK, Malcolm X. Uh, two movies, I don't know if you've seen them, that really stand out to me. Uh, one was on HBO called All the Way with uh, Brian Crankston playing LBJ and uh, Anthony Mackie playing MLK. And just talking about how the 64 Civil Rights Act got passed. I think that that was a terrific movie. And then also uh, Judas and the Black Messiah about uh, Fred Hampton and kind of how the FBI uh, stepped in there to uh, uh, take him out. And so I don't know if you saw those movies, but I, I felt like recently – last couple of years there, there's been some really solid movies on the civil rights movement and uh man that was certainly an industry time in our history in the last four years we've moved in our ibhoa class and and so uh we are now doing the civil rights movement as well and so to to get to learn more and then get to teach it right these are these are people who have uh brought about significant change who were leaders that that inspired and motivated and and you know i saw uh uh black messiah and and i saw that one i did not see the other one and loved it it was great and we used the um oh i can't think of the the name of the movie the tv documentary oh man we used those and so the interviews towards the end of that movie where they're saying eyes on the prize yeah eyes on the prize that's it we show that. And, and so these, these people that it's, it's great when history isn't so historic. It's nice to, to see that these people are still there and it, it's hard not to see the connections to today, the, the, to sit there in a history class and say, you know, Napoleon marched into Russia and you can say, Oh boy, yeah. Wars in East Europe seem like they get bogged down. And, and you see that in, in Ukraine today, but to sit there and say that 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 America has a problem with race, it had a problem with race as soon as this, as soon as colonization started, right? This is pre-Atlantic slave trade. This is the first interactions with the indigenous people. America has had a problem with race, and it hasn't gone away. And there are people that fight to work for it, and there are people that uh, have died working for it. And you want to, you, you hope it's getting better. You're not sure it's getting better, but you want to make sure that the people that are following you are fighting to make it better. And so uh, it's nice to have a, a piece of history that, that you can connect to these kids' lives and, and help them be aware of their biases, help them be uh, aware of what they can do to bring about change. Well, Coach, I, I can say for myself, and I know you still keep in touch with a lot of your former students, you were definitely one of our favorite teachers who have made an impact, and that's obviously a big reason, uh, outside just the sports, but why uh, we kept in touch because you're a, you're a better man. So really want to thank you for your time today. I mean, we're an hour and a half into this uh, podcast, so it's definitely got to break a record, but it's always fun talking sports and other topics with you, and, man, I'm just excited for the NFL season. Really? We'll, we'll, do, it. we'll do it again soon, maybe a playoff preview sort of thing. Playoff season, football season's here. Let's ride, Billy. Let's ride, right? I cannot wait for tomorrow night. I'm so fired up. That's right. Well, thank you so much to uh, my former freshman high school year history teacher, uh, Coach Kevin Curtin, for joining me on the latest edition of The Post with BP to break down the NFL season and make our picks for, picks for the playoffs. This has been the latest edition of The Post with BP. I'm your host, Billy Parvatam. Enjoy the NFL, everybody. Football is back, and we'll see you next time.